Hey, this is Daryl Webster. Welcome back. We're looking at the Microsoft Classroom and in this video we're going to be taking a look at setting up a classroom. So we're going to start off by looking at a teacher who's logged in currently into Office 365 and we can see all the applications that they have available and Classroom is one of them. They've been licensed for Classroom. So we're, as we're signing in, um, we're able to get straight into the Microsoft Classroom environment and we have um, a list of the different classes that the teacher has uh, available to them um, and also the assignments that are currently set. Um, so we're going to start by creating a new class and um, each of these classes is going to get a, a list of uh, resources, areas that they can uh, file share, uh, a OneNote class notebook, your area for conversations and a calendar for organizing different events and, and sharing the due dates. Um, so we're going to come up with a, a quick name, let's just try uh, Year 12 uh, Mathematics uh, and you'll see as I'm creating that that um, it's also looking for an ID that I could use as an email address for some of the communication between the groups um, a lot like a distribution list so I'm gonna just shorten that up a bit um, and uh, make the the ID a little shorter but the the title will be uh, full and we'll go ahead and start to create that. <clears throat> now what it's doing is in the background it's uh, provisioning an Office 365 group. A group is uh, a way of bringing together some of the services that Microsoft makes available within Office 365. There's um, a great big server called Exchange for, for running email, there's SharePoint Online for doing all the, the OneDrive personal file storage and sharing, and also team sites um, for full school-sized intranets and, and classroom environments. Um, we also have uh, other services as well that have been uh, provisioned during that time, but as you can see, uh, we have provisioned a class. And uh, what we have um, is a class that I can start to prepare, but it's um, not available to the students yet. So as I go and put in some of the resources or set up some of the first lessons, uh, I'm not actually um, making that available to the students just yet. I can prepare it all, and as an inactive class, then I can start to um, you know, prepare these things and make it active um, during the beginning of the year. So we'll go through and just have a quick look at some of the, the pieces of the, the classroom environment. Your landing page is where you can see your assignments and then there's a panel over to the right hand side uh, for announcements. So if I just make an announcement, uh, welcome to the new year. And um, yeah, there's a limited number of characters. I can um, add a link to a, a resource of sorts and um, that's going to make it a, um, a post there that's very quick and easy to see on the landing page. Uh, where, does that, where does it actually send? I mean, apart from the, the message going onto the, the page, it's also being uh, sent into the, um, the email that's shared between all the class members. So once we start adding students and maybe a, a teacher to help me teach the class, then I'm able to uh, communicate a course um, via email with that. Man. Uh. So if we take a quick look at the, the teacher's email, um, their email environment, I'll just open that up in a new tab. We'll let that load up and uh, we're going to keep it open so we can see some of the interaction going on uh, between student and teacher, between class and various things that get shared with, with the teacher via email. But the nice thing about the classroom environment is that it presents it there in, that, um, in the announcements area and also in a communication pane that we'll see soon. Uh, we have the calendar, so um, as I open that up, that's going to go over to, again, the Outlook Web Access Experience, um, where you can um, see all your email, and the nice thing about this is that it's bringing it all together. So if I go as a teacher and check my email and check uh, what's on my calendar for the day, um, then I can see all my calendars, and I can see all of these things are overlaid. 
And so you see that um, I've got my personal calendar, which is the one in, in blue at the top there, and the other two calendars are uh, the classes that I um, that I run as a teacher. I can see my eighth grade biology and my year 12 mathematics, and they're overlaid there, so I can see quite clearly. I'll look, on the 1st of February, I've got a field trip coming up um, for the eighth grade biology class. So that's quite useful. Uh, going back over to our other facilities we have, our conversations. Um, so this is where it jumps into um, showing the conversation area driven by email, but it's very, very much like a, um, a subject and a thread. So as I create new conversations over here with my class, um, uh, we will be uh, going on a field trip early. I don't know how relevant this is to, to mathematics. There might be a field trip that we go to um, early on in the year. And, um, and that's going to go out to all the class members um, and be available to them. So as I bring students in or, or another teacher, all of that conversation is there that they can quickly catch up on. And you can see the, the threads of the conversations, new conversations over on the left-hand side. And as uh, people want to participate in that conversation, they can just click on Reply All and um, add their comment as well. Now, the, uh, the unique thing about the uh, first message here, and uh, you can see that little warning or, or um, uh, icon there that says that there's a message or something particular about this message, uh, that you can't reply to this type of conversation. This is an announcement that was placed in the classroom and it seems that even students and teachers can't reply to, to that message. It's really just there to just make an announcement. Um, I'm just not sure about the thinking around that. I think that if you make an announcement, you probably want to have a discussion around that too. So um, I guess we'll learn a bit more about that in the future. So there's our conversation experience. Um, we've got our class notebook, so I do want to go through this experience because uh, it's important for me to set up that class notebook. So as I've created this new class, um, I'm guided through this experience of creating a class notebook. For those of you who are not familiar with what a OneNote class notebook is, um, it is a uh, application that allows you to create and share notes, create and share resources, you can embed videos, um, you can even manage the workflow of uh, setting assignments um, and sending them out to, to students in their own copy of the, their, um, or their own place within this class notebook. So within the class notebook you've got these three spaces, a collaboration space where we can all edit and, and um, participate in class activities, maybe use it as a whiteboard that we can share. You've got your content library, which is where teachers can publish content, students can copy it, but they can't edit it within the content library, it's just there as a, as a way of being able to um, you know, publish and share that content. And then the private spaces are where um, students can have their own notebook, a teacher can go in and have a look at the, the students uh, work and, and work on that with them. Um, and now we can also have a private space for teachers as well and we'll talk about that in the next screen I believe. So here we go, we've got some sections that we can set up within the class notebook. Um, now these are suggested sessions, uh, sections. Um, there is one section here I, I feel that we shouldn't try and delete. Um, as we go and try and set assignments, um, and we'll explore that in another video later on, that that is that section is going to be used within the notebook for for that very purpose. So I, I recommend not deleting that. Um, you may go and um, you know delete some of the handouts and quizzes. One of the good practices uh, for setting up a class notebook is if you know the topics you're going to teach throughout the year, that you can set those up as sections within the notebook already. So I might drop in something like trigonometry. Tree. Probably going to get myself in trouble with some teachers for spelling that incorrectly. Um, and, and I can add those sections in there. And then it's always going to be the same with the, within all the students' notebooks. Um, very easy for them to follow the content along that module of work and put everything in that same section. The other thing that we want to do is turn on this uh, teacher only section group. Now, what this allows a teacher to do is to stage their content, to prepare it, to make it, um, you know, just the way they want it for their class to be able to teach. And then they can copy that uh, section or page into their students' notebooks or into the content section or collaboration section. And, um, and everything that's in that teacher's only section is private right up until that point. You can take it and put it somewhere else. So, a really good area to, to prepare things. So let's go ahead and we've got our, our preview of what that notebook looks like. 
um, we can uh, see what the teacher views and we can also see the students view of that and you can see that section there on trigonometry so we'll go ahead and create that I haven't really looked at this set up multiple notebooks um, so I might just save that for another video um, we'll create that notebook so while that notebook has been created uh, we're also going to go across and look at where the files are now uh, files are a place for a teacher to uh, upload files of course and share them they could be um, PowerPoints, they could be uh, Word documents with assignments in them. Um, there's also a way to share links as files. So if you want to share a, a link that's going to be useful to uh, research of sorts or um, something that's good to, to check it out, um, then you can also upload, upload them here. Um, there is an area for assignments in uh, this folder here. The assignments folder is going to be used when we set up assignments within our class. Um, so within there we're going to see different folders and different resources that uh, match up with the assignment that we create. But we can um, set up other folders or, or create other documents. We can drag and upload them. Um, we can uh, bring them across so that students can, can work on them. And, um, and we have the ability to sync that, that whole document library down to our machines too. So it's very easy for us to do that from our machines locally. Now what I have uh, observed is that students are unable to um, upload content into this library. So the, I think the thinking is that this is a, an area for the class, it's a content section, and anything that needs to be collaborative, um, the, the, uh, it, the guidance is to try and do that out of your OneDrive. But I will do another video later on in the series to show you how to create a collaborative folder in here that um, all your students and teachers can use to, to drop content into and, um, and use that for a collaborative sense. So we have our, our library. Um, we'll go back over to, or rather our files, and um, we uh, can then have a look at our, our notebook. So let's go and have a look at that, our OneNote notebook. Um, now what you're going to see is um, the standard sections that you have within a class notebook. Um, we have in the class notebook various different pieces. We have a section, think of that just like a Word document which might have multiple pages. And that section as you can see here, this section is the welcome section. And uh, Microsoft have created this and they've created pages that you can go through and learn a bit about what a class notebook is. So think of that whole section as a Word document. We also have section groups, as the name suggests, it's a way of grouping sections together. So think of that um, when we look at our collaboration section as a place where um, we can create uh, other sections in here. I might create a section for the uh, trigonometry uh, unit that we're going to be uh, doing. So let's do that. Trigonometry. Okay, and that's going to be available for um, collaborative work in class, and we might, um, you know, make that a, a place where students can uh, write different equations together or put um, things up on the board and, and uh, work on that together. Our content section, um, again, that's a another area where we're able to um, publish content and have students be able to take a copy or look at it, um, but not edit it. Um, and then there's our, our teachers only section. Now what we will see once I start to add students is other sections here for each student. And that's my view as a teacher, I can see that content. So we've, uh, yeah, that's just a quick overview of the, the class notebook and we'll see how that operates uh, as part of the, the workflow in the classroom environment. Uh, and just finally over to manage. So there's uh, some things that we can do to make this classroom a little more attractive. Um, we can give it an icon, so I'm going to go and use something like, uh, well actually it's already selected an icon for us, it looks like graphs, so let's, uh, let's stick with that. Um, we could change the colour up, so I might just change that to blue. Um, we can uh, also pull through some of the details that your schools might use to organise these classes. There, there'll be a class number um, which helps to identify where in the, the catalogue of, of classes um, that this one fits in, like a course code, um, you know, how long the term is, um, and then we're going to be able to add some students. We'll do that shortly. Um, we can add just some, some basic details about when the class meets, so uh, weekly. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10.30. 
after interval and a description of the class. Okay, so we can um, add some cover photos and um, at the moment these are um, chosen from a set of photos. I'm hoping that we'll see the ability to upload our own banner and, um, and uh, make that a little more personalized perhaps to the school or the class and or the, to the teacher's liking. Um, we'll go and add some students now. And so uh, let's go and add, uh, we'll add a few here. Okay, we're going to add Adam. Kara. And Cheryl. Okay, adding students. We're also going to add a teacher to help us co-teach the classroom and this um, allows me to share that responsibility. Uh, as I add this teacher they're going to have all the same permissions that I have um, with running the classroom. So we're going to add um, MOD, just our administrator account. Okay. So as we've added students, there's an uh, option down here to mute the student. And I think this is available for us that if one of the students starts to play up or they you know, need to be uh, disciplined, I guess, around the way that they're communicating, they're communicating inappropriately, you can mute them for a while so they're unable to communicate within that classroom. Um, so yeah, just that feature there. Now, um, the capability to bring uh, teachers, students in um, and as you can see, I could do that all one by one, but if I'm a teacher that has to set up all my classes um, and try and keep that all in synchronization as, as um, students begin to change their mind about which, which class they're going to be in or um, students that come in, through in throughout the year, um, that it could be quite an a additional exercise for, for teachers to, to do. That might be a bit um, laborsome. Uh, so the Microsoft have come up with these student data sync or school data sync which um, works with a number of different student management systems and you're able to connect that to uh, the student management system and synchronize that information across so you're still able to manage all the the class um, uh, membership and, and who's teaching that class the names all the different attributes about the class um, can all be managed from the the system that your administrators use and it just comes through and, and creates these classes for you and keeps them in sync. So yeah, it's a really good uh, good feature there. Now uh, the the last thing that we really need to do is uh, is uh, let's say that we've uh, you know created an assignment. I'm going to do that in another video, but um, we need to make this class active um, so that now we uh, are ready to um, allow students to see this class. Uh, and they will also see that within their experience down here. So let's activate the class. And now you can see it's within the active classes and um, on that landing page, um, not only me as a teacher, uh, I'll see that class uh, because I own it, but also students can now see that um, if they belong to that class. And um, you can see here that I've already got a class with a few, a few assignments that have already been um, set and they're in progress. So that's a, a quick cap over of how to create a class in a classroom environment. Now there's a lot more that we can do with it. We're going to explore that in some future videos. But thanks again for watching and um, stay tuned.